The vast Minnesota prairie is not as vast as it once was. Just over 1% of virgin prairie remains in the state, and that's had an effect on various wildlife populations. So when you read some of the historical accounts of early hunters and explorers or whatever on prairie chickens, it's kind of mind-boggling today how many birds they would have seen. You can, you can read excerpts like uh, when the hunter fired his shot at a bird, the, 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 it was deafening the noise of the wings and the ground vibrated with the you know, rise of so many birds and stories of two hunters going out for two hours and coming back with 350 birds and stuff like that. The prairie chicken population boomed with the introduction of small grains by European settlers, but the boom didn't last long. They were very common for a while, but then the, the, the swing in habitat conversion reached a point where we were really losing too much grassland and uh, it got to the point where in the 1940s, there actually was no longer a, even a regulated hunting season on prairie chickens. Their numbers had reached such a low point that the season had to be closed in the state. Various conservation efforts from a handful of organizations have led to increased grassland habitat. The conservation efforts that have been underway, groups like the Nature Conservancy, Pheasants Forever, Minnesota Prairie Chicken Society, Minnesota DNR, Pheasant, or, uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are some of the big players that have worked hard for decades to get basically grassland established and or protect from willing selling landowners protect grasslands that were still out there. The Minnesota DNR and the Nature Conservancy developed the Minnesota Prairie Conservation Plan, which helps restore the prairie and in turn, the prairie chicken. So the, the prairie plan was actually developed back in about 2009 um, and it was directly after we had the legacy amendment vote in 2008. And conservation partners again thought we needed to really pull together um, there's going to be a lot of scrutiny on the use of these funds and again we wanted to make sure that we were using that in the most effective and efficient ways. The person who actually started to pull that together was a then assistant director for the Nature Conservancy, Tom Landwehr, and he now is obviously DNR Commissioner Tom Landwehr. Um, so that's really kept the Prairie Plan front and center um, in the conservation community uh, in, in Minnesota. Prairie chickens are one of the species that are going to most benefit from this idea. Um, some species you can manage on a 40 acres here and a 60 acres there. Prairie chickens are really landscape level birds. Um, they need areas about 320 acres of grass uh, before you'll, they'll, you'll really start finding them in an area and then you need quite a few of those big blocks of grass in a, re in a, in a region or in one of these core areas before you'll get a sustainable populations of these birds. The Prairie Plan is meant to connect habitat and working with private landowners is important to the success of the plan. Prairie chickens do well in what people might call a working landscape where you have grazing, you have haying, you have some agricultural row crops, but you've got to have a certain percentage of grass in that landscape because they are definitely birds of the grass. They live in the grass, they need that grass to survive. And if, if the grass disappears or if the grass becomes poor quality, you can have a grassland, but if you let it grow up to trees, if it gets too brushy and too, too many trees on it, they're not a rough grouse, they're not a forest bird, they need big open grassland. In Minnesota, there's a limited hunting season that takes place each September. It runs for nine days and licenses are awarded by lottery in various zones. So prairie chickens, Brian, like a little bit shorter stuff as compared to like pheasant hunters, they know sometimes the heavier cover, the taller grass is where they want to be, not so much for prairie chickens. That's right. I mean, um, obviously when you pheasant hunt, most pheasant hunters, when they see a little cattail patch or whatever, they head right to it or a little thicket of brush. But prairie chickens are open grassland birds and they do like thinner cover. You won't typically find them in the heaviest cover on a site. And, uh, prairie chickens can be a birds of miles. Sometimes you get lucky and stumble right into them, but because they live in those big, large grassland expanses, you got to find them, you know, and just keep walking and keep with a good dog, you can, you know, hopefully come up with them. And the most important name of the game, whether you're pheasant hunting or chicken hunting, is keep an eye on your dog. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, too many times I've ignored the dog when you're walking and decide you want to go your own way and the dog should come back to you, or you get back to the <laughs> truck and your dog's still hunting a little bit and you yeah. think, ah, there's nothing by the truck and there goes a rooster or there goes your target, right? You know, just trust the dog. Always trust your dog. <laughs> yeah. 
And through a lot of conservation efforts, we've been able to get the habitat back on the ground. And uh, I think it was 2003, we're able to start again this limited hunting season for prairie chickens. While you can only shoot two prairie chickens in a season now, hunters that appreciate this bird take their chances in the lottery for the opportunity to strap on the orange and go out in search of this interesting prairie grouse. And as we found out, sometimes they're more wary than your average upland bird. Oops, there goes one. We, we figure we probably have around 5,000 prairie chickens in Minnesota, you know, give or take, you know, it depends on the year. But if we were suddenly to drop down where maybe our best estimates are where we only had a thousand prairie chickens in Minnesota and very small populations in any of these core prairie areas that we talked about before. Well then I think that th there would be a lot of groups, including hunting groups, that would be the first to st step up and say, you know, maybe we don't have enough birds at this point, we should close this hunting season for a while and, and redouble our efforts on conservation projects to try to, you know, get more birds, try to grow the population. And so I think that the long-term conservation of a prairie chicken population in the state is somewhat you know contingent upon having the support behind this bird of that hunting public because of all the conservation work that's been done for wild turkeys or you know you name the species there's the, you know waterfall all the wetland restoration work so I think having the hunting public behind it is a good thing. And biologists can't stress enough the importance of protecting and restoring as much native prairie as possible. Both in Minnesota and across the Midwest and actually the continental United States, there's only 1% of tall grass prairie left. It's the most endangered ecosystem in the country. And so it's really important to save every last little bit that we can. Oh, this is this is made for TV. This spot.